What's going on guys, it's Lady B, and I am back, but with something a little bit different. Now, you guys say you don't see this enough, and what is it? It's me attacking personally. So today you get to see my attacks uh, from a recent war against One Hive Genesis in 11 original, uh, where I play. You might actually get to see me playing a little bit more, um, but as I do go into some of the wars with Eve, um, I will be trying to record some of my three-star attacks, maybe even some breakdowns, you know, because we can always talk about fails and how to improve attacks, what went wrong. Um, but I, I love your feedback. So if you think these videos are going to help you, let me know and I'll continue moving forward with them. But for today, we're going to focus on the three stars with two different strategies and stay tuned to the end of the stream because I have a very special announcement for a giveaway in honor of hitting 5,000 subs on YouTube. Well, this was my comeback war for 11 original. Um, it's been a couple of months since I've actually played and even before then I was playing very inconsistently. I've taken quite a bit of a break from playing competitively and in general, just because I've been focusing on my content creation, but I miss it. I miss it very much and I wanna get back to it. So I'm working my way back up into 11 original. I've got a lot of hard work to do to prove myself because they are very competitive. They've got some amazing players uh, and it's gonna be a struggle. But my first performance back, I did come in. Um, I'm actually blocking it. I'm blocking it. <laughs> let's, let's move this. I came in with the um, the fresh hit. You can see right there, fresh hit. If I can move out of the way, uh, fresh hit six pack, which I am very proud of. Um, so we're gonna take a look. And I even took down Bisectatron. I think you guys might recognize that name there. That is one of his accounts, Trisectatron. Um, but over there in One Hive Genesis. So let's take a quick look through the two attacks for Town Hall 11 that got it done for me. The first attack here you can see was on Bisectatron's base. And this particular strategy, we'll take a look quickly at the uh, the scroll bar before we actually break it down and go into it. Um, but I went in with the Queen, uh, Queen Walk Miner. And let me actually, let's get rid of this AQ. I love her there, but she's blocking the three little archers that we want to see. So I want to talk about the troop composition that we use. Now, queen walk miners, you can either queen walk, you can queen charge. So you can have ver um, varying formats of this, of what you want to bring for your troop composition. But anytime you do a queen walk or a queen charge, you're going to always want five healers. So you see my five healers there at the bottom. We've got the loons um, and the loons are specifically to go with the Yeti blimp. You see that blimp right there? It's housing. Um, it is housing a Yeti and uh, I think I had some Valks. You can do a couple of different components within. Typically what you need is the Yeti. In Town Hall 11 you're getting one Yeti and then you're going to get some filled troops and you need a rage to go along with. But you're going to use those loons to actually um, tank in the way to pick up any possible um, air traps along the way so the blimp can get through and you can get your Yeti set in place. Um, I've got a baby drag to help out with the funnel and then obviously some cleanup troops here. You see the archers, the goblin, the wizards. Those are my cleanup troops. Um, the loons also served as funneling uh, for a couple of the mortars on the outskirts. Um, so I actually had a minion that was used to help pick up, uh, well, it was, a, it was originally planned to help pick up a mortar. So let's actually go into it um, and I'll talk you along uh, with the strategy. Okay, so you can see I'm zoomed in here. The first step of this raid was to get that Yeti, uh, the Yeti blimp inside on the IT. So this is where I was talking about those loons coming in, doing the tanking to potentially pick up any bombs along the way. Now, what I could have done better here is I didn't drop the blimp quite quick enough. As soon as those loons went down, got right to the cannon where there was a potential of picking up any air traps right, um, right behind where that cannon is in that open section. I should have immediately dropped. So some improvement for me, I can use. <laughs> um, I do have to critique myself every time I go through these, um, but you can see I actually picked up the bomb along the way. It was fine. The blimp had enough time to get in there from the angle that it came at, so it didn't cause too many problems. Uh, so I did get a little bit lucky there because my loons did not pick up that bomb along the way. But I got the Yetis in. 
right there in the center of the base, um, well, the center of that multi-targeting inferno. So it does pull the CC, the King's Eye Rage it up. Again, another thing that I could have worked on um, a little bit better here that I'll have to work on improving, because this is a newer strategy to me, is dropping the queen right after. I stood there just a little bit too long, Always worry about time. You need to go step by step and know when you can keep moving. So as soon as I dropped, the um, the rage was in place. As soon as I opened up the Yeti, um, the Yeti blimp, I should have moved over to my queen. So I did hesitate a little bit. Did get the queen down though, and this is where you're gonna see the loons coming in to help with the funnel. Now the point of this attack was actually to work that queen through into the center of the base, which involved creating this funnel here. And that's where you can see the loon coming in for the mortar, was taking on the heat from the archer tower, and I needed to get in um, a minion just in case I didn't get it down. If there was a trap along the way, knocked out the loon. The loon comes in, takes on, um, it doesn't actually take on too much heat. It actually gets it down. I don't need it. The queen came in for the assist. Did poison up the archers. There's a lot of archers coming at my queen, so I had to be mindful of that. And I have the next loon coming up in, to help keep that funnel going along so the queen doesn't path up to the 12 o'clock side of the base. I've got the other loon who tanks for the baby dragon, tanks that archer tower right up top there on the, uh, the 9, 30, 10 o'clock side of the base. There we go with the zoom out you can see now. But that funnel helps set this queen in path to work her inside that entire opening here and work her way up towards the queen, which gives me great access for the miners to kind of power through, take on the eagle fairly early and keep working through the base. So let's get it going. This queen gets such great value here because you can see she works through the inside of the base, taking out those defenses that are on the outside, some of the defenses that are on the inside and continuing to narrow through. Now my king is set for the funnel here at the six o'clock side, right on the town hall. And this is to entice the miners to work through, allow the king to path up to the three o'clock side of the base. And we have heroes working in a somewhat parallel line with those miners working right in between them. So this is the basic component of how you want to work any sort of queen walk miner attack heroes on either side unless you're using a siege barracks because then you can add that in um, as well to help with your funnel so i pop the king ability um, and i dropped the miners at a point where i probably should have dropped a wizard actually before to help this king funnel because as you can see here the king crosses over to where the miners are uh, where the miners are and this gets a little hairy because the miners easily could have pulled out i did get a little bit lucky that the that the miners didn't fully pull out of formation here the king kind of backtracks i still have the queen going in a great direction you know this is a lot of making sure that you're aware of what's going on or have a spotter with you i actually had a spotter with me for this attack um who helped out quite a bit in making sure that i was kind of on target and that's when you have your queen going and you're working on other phases of your attack spotters are lifesavers so King meets up here with the miners. You can see I lose a few to the outskirts. Um, I get that rage down. I'm holding the Grand Warden ability. I'm waiting for him to get somewhere in the radius. <laughs> this is what I have to work on. I'm a little bit slow on my mind, on my uh, Grand Warden ability, and I've got some sloppy spell placement here. But overall, I'm able to actually cover up most of the miners. Um, the last heal that I drop gets the main pack left over, but I really only needed to use one the way I covered those. Uh, I probably could have spared one, but this queen was still going strong here. Kings working around the corner with a couple of miners. We've got that grand board and still full health. I mean, all things considered how sloppy some of my execution was coming back into this. Um, it did go over very well. Again, this shows the power of miners. We see it a lot. You guys see me doing a lot of Town Hall 13 content, but in Town Hall 11, miners are still really strong. They're doing great work. Um, it's just about following them. I think that's the hardest part of miners is making sure that you know what's going on and kind of keeping an eye on them. And that's what I'm trying to get used to. Hybrid in 11 is probably gonna be one of my next ones. Uh, to continue to work on because I am struggling with that a little bit, seeing the difference between the hogs and the miners. But as you can see here, I get to the tail end. I have a ton left over. I was very careful about placement as well of my archers and my cleanup because time was a little bit of a worry here for me. So as soon as I knew that those last defenses were um, being distracted by other units, I was able to get the archers down and help out. 
but we did smash through and I picked up the triple on that first hit. So we can take a look at the next one coming through. Let's see, scroll down. Um, and I pre-recorded this, as you can see, no hands. <laughs> and the second hit was, let's pop this over. Uh, the second hit was a, pe a P.E.K.K.A. smash. Um, so I'm confusing my, my Yetis and my P.E.K.K.A.s. Uh, this was a P.E.K.K.A. smash. I've never actually done a P.E.K.K.A. smash before. This was my first one. And I do use the stone slammer in this one, so we get to see something very different. Again, we're talking about Town Hall 11. A lot of the strategies that we see, even up to Town Hall 13, all the same similar components to these. But for Town Hall 11, you do, again, have a lot of variation of what you can do with this. I decided to go with three P.E.K.K.A.s just because I wanted more space for bowlers to help move along with. Four P.E.K.K.A.s can be overkill. Um, in, in my opinion, it's not necessary. You can get more power with the bowlers and it gives you a little bit more room to work around um, depending on where you need to send in some extra loons or help create a funnel. So you, so you have a little more to work with, which is nice. I said earlier in the queen walk that I did use five healers, the same if you're gonna do a warden walk. And this was actually my very first warden walk. Um, so, warden walks are very time consuming and um, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it was good for me to have a spotter because I get very concerned about time and my patience and you have to have a lot of patience. So let's take a look as we go through uh, because a warden walk does take a bit of time in this. Now I drop him down here and you'll see as I set down my warden before I drop the healers, I actually drop a cocoa loon and that Coco Loon is there to help pick up any possible traps along the way. Um, and that's, I have these four loons because I have some to help with that. I also have some to do some tanking for the Stone Slammer. Um, for the spells, uh, anytime you're doing a uh, P.E.K.K.A. Smash, you're going to want to have rages. Rages and jumps, unless you're doing quad quakes, but rages are really key to this. And I do have a freeze, I've got a haste, um, that's actually to go in for the stone slammer, which we'll talk about momentarily as we get along. Um, because the area that I actually wanted to drop this, there was a multi-targeting IT. So that meant as soon as it opened up or was being targeted, I would need to freeze that and haste my loons in that I have in my stone slammer. So we'll continue moving on as we go into this warden walk here. So that loon comes in. Um, and picks up, uh, you know, to help pick up any possible traps along the way, but picks up some of the defensing, uh, the defenses there, allowing the Grand Warden to work through just a little bit quicker. Uh, so as he's going along, my next focus is to, is to see where he's going. Once he's done enough work, I can drop the King to help set up the funnel here. Now this King is going to go on the cannon at the 730 side of the base with a wizard on the builder hut to help create that funnel so I can work up from the six o'clock side. And the king is to just work his way up, sacrificial here as the peck of the queen take on the town hall. Um, and then I am able to drop the two pekkas to move in and everything is gonna converge. Now you do wanna be mindful of your warden. You don't want him going off on a tangent. so. I'm playing it safe here, getting those P.E.K.K.A.s pretty close in that aura to make sure that he pulls back in and moves their way through. And I'm gonna set a jump um, right towards that air defense, um, right past the king podium to give my units access into the center of the base. So king ability is forced here. I've got the bowlers, as you can see, right here down at the bottom, working up with the P.E.K.K.A.s everything's converging through it's just a king i'm not worrying about the cc comes out we do have a poison so as everything's getting here right in the center i'm able to work everything in and you can see early warden ability because of all that damage is coming on so warden ability has popped here because i'm taking on the eagle i'm taking on a ton of expos here um, plus the cc so poison is able to help take out those troops, warden ability, keeping things safe, and that early rage as well to try and power everything through coming up. Now the second jump is actually really amazing because the layout of the space 
you can see it's like mid midair right there towards the queen. It helps give access for my pekkas to walk outside the base. So the jump is set. I'm able to get everything in and through past that jump over to the queen. Now this is where I set in the stone slammer. I've got the stone slammer. I didn't give those loons enough time to actually do the work pushing through. That's a little sloppy on my part there because again, you want those loons to pick up any traps along the way before you drop any critical uh, units that need to survive. It worked out fine. Stone slammers are super tanky. Was able to get it in, but this is where I need to be mindful of my haste and my freeze. So those two things are gonna work out very nicely for my loons as they come in because the freeze is gonna hold off that multi-targeting inferno that you can see all the way at the top of the base here and the haste to sweep the loons through. Now we've got that extra rage that just drops down, gets everything through that jump um, over and into the base and a little bit outside. That's where you can see everything else converging through. It's the Pekkas, the Bullers, that all work their way through and the queen's able to take the jump to take out the multi-targeting inferno. And there we go, we've got that freeze set in place to hold off the AD and the multi-targeting inferno. And the loons open up from the stone slammer. We're looking at the top side of the base here and that haste is just gonna sweep the loons through to the last remaining defenses where everything's gonna work through. If you look at the scroll bar at the bottom too, you can see I have all my cleanup here. I'm also holding out to two loons. Loons are great for cleanup if there's no more defenses remaining and you have high hit point structures, you can spread them around the base. But I am very careful to strategically place some of these units and make sure that I have my cleanup spread around pretty well. But it didn't even matter because this was so crushed that I really didn't even need to drop most of this stuff. And I still had the queen ability here to the very end. So you can see the cleanup working through nicely over on the 10 o'clock side of the base, Pekka up at the 12 o'clock side with the wizards rounding down and a massive loon parade coming through down at the bottom to pick up the triple. So again, it's another Town Hall 11 attack strategy that you get to see that is crushing Town Hall 11, um, but not just that, Town Hall 12, Town Hall 13 but it's a, it's a great troop composition here and I highly recommend using the three P.E.K.K.A.s and having some more power through with your bowlers, but just be mindful that you're gonna wanna set a really nice funnel with it um, and see where you can get the most value, where you can get your troops working together. Be mindful of where the eagle is, you know, if you can get that early and also use your warden ability early through that, um, you're gonna get a lot of great value. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the attack strategies today and I hope you enjoyed watching a little bit more uh, actually coming from me. I know this is something you guys have been asking for. I'm definitely listening to your feedback. Um, I'm doing things that I can to try and help you guys learn a little bit better, to try and help better explain the attack strategies. Um, also talking about the troop bars and the troop compositions, which somebody had pointed out recently. So I listen to you guys. As always, any feedback, feel free to leave in the comments below. And um, we have a giveaway. I said earlier in the, uh, in the intro, about a giveaway. We finally, we finally hit 5k subs. So this is a big monumental moment for me on YouTube. So thank you to you all who have subscribed and continue to watch. And as I'm recording this right now, I finally hit the amount I needed in order to apply to monetize my channel too. So really big things coming and it's thanks to you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the comments and the support. And in honor of that, I'm going to be doing a um, gold pass giveaway, um, but I'm actually gonna do five. So we're gonna do five gold pass giveaways. And all you guys need to do is A, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and B, get over to my Twitter. Get over to my Twitter because that's where all the details are gonna be. You need to be on my Twitter, you need to be on my YouTube, and you're gonna follow the rest of the instructions. So I'm gonna send you guys on a little bit of a goose hunt for the rest of the details, um, and hopefully it'll be well worth it. But again, thank you so much. Link to my Twitter is in the description below along with the rest of my social media, so be sure to check that out. And um, 
again, make sure you're subscribed, turn on the notification so you know when the next videos go down. I will catch you guys um, soon. And if you want to see more of me, you can actually watch some of my attacks and live streaming on Twitch. That'll be in the link below. Until next time, this is Lady V. I'll catch you guys later.